All right, hello. Um, I think people are still coming in, but I can give you a little introduction to what we're gonna talk about today and um, get started and it's being recorded. So folks who couldn't make it will be able to access it later. So this is the TA orientation session. Um, some of the information I'm gonna present also applies to RAs. Um, I see some of you who are in here um, who are going to have an RA this semester. Some of you are going to have a TA, um, but you are required to complete at least one semester of TA before you graduate. So this is always a good thing to be aware of um, what mm -hmm. TAing entails. Um, additionally, in your first semester of TAing, you will be taking the 890T course which is a full semester one credit course that will prepare you for um, being a TA. So this is like your crash course, like everything you need to know on day one of being a TA. Um, the rest of it, um, you're gonna be able to, to pick up over the course of the semester. Um, so as I'm going along, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm also gonna leave plenty of time at the end to answer questions, feel free to put them in the chat and um, I can come back to it or you can um, raise your hand or just interrupt me. I don't really mind being interrupted. Um, oh, so if you're not TAing this semester, but you're signed up for 890T, it's not necessarily a mistake. You do not have to take it uh, if you're not TAing. Um, in some ways, it's a better class to take if you are TAing because some of the work you're going to be doing is with your TA ship. Um, the awkward thing is that it only happens in the fall. So if you uh, think that you might not be a TA this semester, but be a TA in the spring, it might be good to take 890T now. Otherwise, you could drop it and plan to take it next fall or whichever fall uh, you're going to uh, be a TA for the first time. And Eileen is the one who runs all of the um, enrollments for 890T. I don't think that you can drop it or enroll in it yourself. So if you want to change your enrollment in 890T, just email Eileen and let her know. Um, great. Uh, so my, sorry. Uh, yes, you are allowed technically to TA in the spring if you do not take 890T now. Um, there is a slightly longer orientation that you go through and then um, you are supposed to take it in the next fall that you're TAing. Sometimes people wiggle out of it. We don't want them to. Uh, I think it's a really important class. It talks a lot about um, different ways to be a teacher and building your academic career. Uh, so I, I encourage you to take it. Um, and yeah, you. I believe that you can take 890T. That's another good question for Eileen. Um, all I know is that you have to take it if you are TAing this semester for the first time. Um, you don't have to take it if you are an RA right now, but I believe you can. So just check in with Eileen if you're an RA and you're enrolled in 890T, whether that is intentional. Okay, so I'm going to get started with a little presentation. So, um, hi, you may or may not have met me. My name is Emma Anderson, and I am the Director of Inclusive Education and Teaching Support. Um, so that means that I both do things related to diversity, and I supervise all the TAs, all the UCAs, and all the graders. I'll tell you what all those things are later. Um, and so I have some information to share with you about how you can be the best TA you can be from day one. I have a little slideshow that I will share. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh dear. Sorry, I'm figuring out how to um, present my Google Slides because I can never remember what the thing is that I'm supposed to do. Okay, here we go. All 
All right, so your crash course in being a TA. Here are the basics. You have responsibilities and you have rights and we want you to be able to ask for help. Um, sometimes students are confused about whether or not being a TA is a job or just part of your PhD. It is part of your PhD, but it is a job. Um, you have a contract, you're being paid, you're getting a tuition waiver. Um, so you need to treat it as a job. Also, the law applies, and I will tell you which laws are going to apply to you. Um, and you have a responsibility to be considerate and communicative. You have a right to consideration of your supervisor and your colleagues, and you have a union membership, which also protects you. Uh, I'm assuming you will be getting some information from the union that's more intensive. I'm just going to cover the broad strokes here. Um, and I want to remind you that it's okay to ask for help, no matter which position you have right now, whether that's a TA or an RA. Um, you can always ask your faculty member for help. If that doesn't feel right or if that relationship is going poorly, um, you can ask me. Uh, you can ask Erica Dawson Head. Um, and then you can also ask Elliot, Andrew, Eileen, Nina, or Yvonne. So very quickly, Elliot is the outgoing graduate program director. So he's a current director here. You may have met him already or seen his face somewhere. Um, Andrew is the incoming um, graduate program director and that's Andrew McGregor. We have lots of Andrews. Uh, Eileen, you've met for sure. And then Nina and Yvonne are the instructors for 890T and they are always happy to help you. So this is a job and what does that mean? Uh, it means you have a responsibility to communicate. Please read your email. Um, you have a UMass email, like an at UMass email, and you also have an at cs.umass.edu email. Um, you may get email from either of those sources. So set up your mail forwarding now uh, so that you don't miss any emails. Sometimes this happens to students in their first semester. Um, you can contact uh, system at cs.umass.edu. Um, Alex is part of that team. I don't know if he's still listening. He could put that in the chat maybe um, to get help with getting your mail forwarding going. Um, so read your email every day, hopefully multiple times a day, and answer your email within 24 hours. Uh, complete your assigned tasks on time or communicate if you can't. Things happen. Um, you might have internet connectivity problems, family issues, illness, any number of things could happen. Um, it's okay if you can't meet your deadline. It is not okay to not communicate about it. The number one difficulty that I see in TAing is, um, and in RA ships as well, is students who sort of drop off the face of the earth for a few days. Um, and their faculty member is expecting constant communication. Now you don't have to be on your email like all the time. There are a few faculty members who are like, like I'm not really sure they sleep. Um, they answer email so fast. You don't have to be like that, but it should be a turnaround within 24 hours that you're responding to things. Show up when you're asked to. If you have uh, office hours, show up for office hours or email your students and your professor to let them know you can't be there. Uh, lab meetings. If you are assigned to a lab or a discussion section, you must be there. If you are asked to come to a grading session and you agree to come, you must be there. If you have a course staff meeting, show up. It's very simple, but it's good to know ahead of time that this is what we're asking for. Most TAs are not asked to go to class, like actual class lectures, but some classes that are smaller might ask you to. So just be clear with your faculty member um, what you're supposed to be showing up to. Uh, and both a TA and an RA contract, unless um, you have talked to me and you understand differently, like you have a 10 hour contract, uh, you have a 20 hour contract, which means that you are supposed to spend an average of 20 hours a week on your job as a TA or as an RA. Sometimes you might work less, a few weeks you might work more. If you feel that you are continually working more than 20 hours a week, then that's a time to start a conversation about the workload. Um, 
but usually classes will have you work much less than 20 hours a week most of the time and then when you're grading midterms for example you might be working more uh, the law applies so the law applies all the time but particularly um, in these situations with vulnerable students. So here are the laws that you are beholden to particularly. Um, number one is FERPA. So you probably uh, had an agreement that you had to sign on SPIRE that said that you had done some FERPA training. Um, all FERPA says really is that you cannot disclose grades or any academic information about students to parents or reporters. Um, or anyone else who asks for it who is not the student or a faculty member or advisor who has like a very particular academic success interest in the student. I know parents have academic success at heart. You cannot tell parents what the student's grade is, whether or not they've been showing up to class. You can say, I last saw that student on this date and that's a safety thing that you can say, but um, you cannot disclose any academic information. Um, and someone had asked me, where do you go to get FERPA trained? Um, so I have this link in here. There's a page for FERPA certification. Um, and If you follow this certain and you can complete it all online. Emma, we've lost you there for about five seconds. If you want to go back, you paused. Sure. Um, yeah, I just got the notification that I was unstable. Um, so you all saw the FERPA webpage that I went to? Yeah, I did. Yes. Okay. Um, so the next, I, you didn't really miss anything then. I was just rambling. Um, the next thing is fairness. Um, so we grade all students the same way. Um, students can get disability accommodations uh, that you may know about, and they can change testing conditions and the conditions of assignments, but they can't change what they're actually graded on. Um, so just make sure that you are being fair when you're grading students' papers. Academic honesty, you may not give students answers to homework um, or a system in plagiarizing in any way. Uh, one of the things about the culture of our department, probably especially now when we're um, in remote land, is that there's a high sensitivity to potential for cheating. So there are some faculty members who are going to uh, be really, really vigilant about stopping cheating. And that can be a little overwhelming. You don't have to be hyper vigilant. If you notice it, do say something. Um, but we are trying to tone down that culture in our department um, because, well, plagiarism is a problem and we don't want students to copy. We also don't want to be failing students left and right because they didn't understand what the academic honesty policy was. Um, so make sure that when you have the opportunity to, you're clear with students about what is allowed in terms of collaboration um, and don't give students answers. And then Title IX. Um, Title IX has gotten complicated lately, um, but what you need to know uh, is that Title IX is the law that protects students from sexual harassment. Um, so if you hear of any harassment, discrimination, violence, um, that is based in identity. So it could be gender-based, sexuality-based, it could be race-based, um, any of that kind of discrimination, harassment, or violence. Um, you are really encouraged to report. You are not a mandated reporter. So if someone discloses to you, um, I experienced sexual assault, you don't have to take that anywhere, but we encourage you to tell someone else to not hold that uh, on your own because we don't expect you to be um, like TA and therapist and tutor and all these things, you can't be everything to one student. Um, so I do encourage you to get help uh, if you are having that kind of a concern about a student. Uh, and the link that I'm gonna show you 
is uh, for the Dean of Students Office, the student support request and referral. So if you um, have a concern about a student, um, they haven't been showing up to class, um, they've, you know, their grades have dropped off, um, you just notice concerning behavior, um, do check in with your faculty member. And then also on this page, you can scroll down and there's this big button um, to submit a support request and referral um, where you just put in like, this is the student's name, this is their Spire ID, this is what I observed, um, can you help? And then the Dean of Students Office will follow up with them. Um, and that's all you need to do for Title IX reporting as well. So if you have a concern about harassment, you can put that in here if you have a concern about mental health or um, housing instability, anything like that. Uh, you can always submit a referral. Um, is there a question? Okay. Um, I'm happy to talk about this more in questions afterwards. Um, when you refer, what happens is that someone from the Dean of Students Office will just email the student and say, hey, we heard that maybe there was a concern. Are you okay? If the student writes back and says, I'm totally okay, don't worry about me, um, then their hands off. Um, so this isn't like starting a major report, um, harassment investigation, anything like that. This is just a way for students to get some extra assistance if you think you, they might need it. Uh, and then Erica Dawson Head is also the Title IX coordinator for our college. So if you aren't ready to go right up to the Dean of Students or you wanna like talk to a real person about it, um, you can talk to her, you can also talk to me, but I'll usually refer you to her because she knows all the rules better than I do. Okay, that's all the law stuff. Um, also, please be considerate. Communicate, I can't say it enough times. Just answer your email. Just tell us what's going on with you. Communicate when you're having issues, when you have to be absent, when you have questions. Just please communicate. Um, if you drop off the face of the earth, you don't answer your email, then we start to worry about you and worry that you don't wanna do your work. But I know you want to do your work. Um, it's okay to say I'm overwhelmed and I need some time, but please communicate. Uh, respect quiet workspaces, that's left in here from last year when we were in labs. Um, if you are working in a lab and it is quiet, try and be quiet as well. That's just some common courtesy. Um, and be kind and compassionate in person and online. I'm going to give you some examples of what that might look like or what that might not look like. Um, but sometimes our online communication can come up, come across oddly, like not how we meant it to. Um, like if you ended a sentence with a period and it seemed like you were angry, um, those kinds of things. Um, so just like think about what it would mean to be kind online. Um, and then your rights. Um, I don't know if you're meeting with the GEO Union later today. It's probably next week, actually. Um, the union protects you in terms of making sure you get your vacation time, your sick time, um, if you have to take parental leave, which is not always paid for, but I believe that this semester there may be an option for parental leave due to COVID. Um, look for more on that from GEO. Um, you have a right to be communicated with about your work. Um, so you have a right to know how you're doing, um, what you are supposed to do. If you are unclear on that, please ask your supervisor and professor what you need to do. And your fellow TAs and RAs should respect you and your time and your workspace. Um, so we're all understanding that everybody's got a job to do. We're all busy. Uh, we're going to ask questions when we need to, and we're going to be respectful about it. And if this isn't happening, please come talk to me. Uh, I'm really happy to talk to you anytime, really about anything. Um, and lots of other staff and faculty members are happy to talk to you about it. You do not have to fix it all yourself. Um, 
there are lots of people that you can ask. Uh, this is second only to communication and what I want you to take away from this, that if something's not going right, ask for help. Uh, you can ask other TAs, like most of you are on courses that have multiple TAs, so you can uh, talk with them to see what's going on. Um, if you are a first semester PhD student, you will have a mentor shortly and you can ask them. Um, you can ask a professor, um, you can ask me, you could ask Erica or Eileen. Um, I put in there, um, I can talk about TA or advisor concerns. I'm sort of the catch-all for, in addition to TA ships, um, I help students understand their relationships with their advisor if they need to. Uh, because I am not faculty, I am totally separate from the system of faculty. So if you're having a disagreement with your advisor and you want it to stay confidential, um, you can always come talk to me. Uh, here are some words that might be thrown around that you should probably know. A UCA, if you've heard that word before, is an undergraduate course assistant. So these are undergrads who have taken the course before, who got a pretty good grade and are there as peer help and assistance. A grader, when someone says grader, they usually mean a master's student grader. Um, those students are kind of like course assistants on um, graduate level courses. Piazza is the forum we, or the online system we use for a question and answer forum. Moodle is what we use for course management. There are a few courses that use Blackboard, but usually we're just using Moodle. Uh, and Gradescope is an online grading platform that is used by some courses. Piazza, you can sign up for just on your own. And there should be a class link that you can join into that your faculty member has set up. Moodle, you will be enrolled in automatically. Um, I know they're working on enrolling people in Moodle right now. So you might not be there yet, but you should be there soon. And then Gradescope, if you're asked to use Gradescope or to set up Gradescope, that's another thing that um, CSCF or system at cs.umass.edu can help you with. Okay. So I wanna uh, talk about a few scenarios and then I'll be done and there'll be time for questions. So uh, usually when we are all like sitting together, I have people like read through these scenarios and talk them out with other people. Um, I am going to talk through them really quickly, mostly the TAs, um, but uh, we can talk through a couple of these RA ones as well. Um, so TAs, I already covered this. If a parent approaches you and asks for the grades of a student in your class, you cannot give them to them. Just say, the law doesn't let me. You have to ask your student. A student approaches you after exams and begs for an extra few points. You can't give it to them. Say, I'm sorry. And then you can also refer them to the faculty member. If that doesn't work, you can refer them to Dave Barrington. Um, I know I'm throwing a lot of names around, but we have a person who is um, in charge of academics and academic disputes. Um, and your faculty member will know who that is. And if a student approaches you and tells you they have been sexually harassed by another student, um, you can use that reporting form. You can come to me or Erica, uh, but most of all, be compassionate and kind and listen. If someone is coming to you with something vulnerable you are in a position of power. They are coming to you because they trust you. So earn that trust by being compassionate and listening to them. Um, and for the RA stuff, I think um, the one that's gonna hit you the most is if your advisor doesn't give you any feedback on your work um, and you're worrying that it's because they think your work is terrible. Uh, I'm going to tell you, usually that's not the case. Um, faculty are really busy and they often don't give regular feedback. Um, you can ask for feedback. You can say, hey, is this okay? Um, is this what you were expecting? What could I do better next time? It's absolutely okay to ask for feedback and to ask other folks in the department, especially older students, uh, because they were all there once too. 
you are going to have that worry. You are not alone. I promise you, you're A, not the only student who thinks that they might have terrible work, and B, your work is almost certainly not terrible. Promise. Um, if that thought pattern is getting really consistent, you can also come talk to me. I'm happy to chat about it with you. Um, and then communicating online is something we're going to be doing a lot of. Again, communicate, like read and reply to your email. Can't say it enough times. Think about what it would sound like if you said it in person. Would it sound kind or not? And evaluate that. And try and be kind and respectful as you're communicating online. Um, and I, then I like to use this example of what not to do when answering forum posts. Uh, this is something that actually happened. It wasn't a PhD student who answered this way, but it was a, an undergraduate course assistant. And a, a, a student anonymously posts, can we have an auto grader with public and private tests? Um, this is something that happens in introductory classes that we allow them public and private tests so that they can figure out how their code is working. The answer that this person wrote was no, this is not 121, this is not 187, this is 220, a long, long rant, and you will be unemployable in three years. If a student asks a question, especially online, that you think might be silly or simple, still answer the question. All you need to say is no, you can't. If you wanna talk more, I'm happy to chat with you. You don't need to shame them for ask, answering, sorry, for asking the question. Um, you can't really say anything about their employability. This is just a what not to do. Um, and finally, I just wanna reiterate um, how you can ask for help from me and from Erica, who I think you will meet next week. She is the Director of Diversity and also the Title IX Coordinator. If you wanna start a new student group, you're looking for connections with other students, we can help you do that. If something makes you feel uncomfortable and you do not know what to do, um, but you feel weird bringing it to a faculty member, you can definitely come talk to us. This has happened before, by the way. If you're feeling really anxious and you don't know what to do, we can help you with that too. If you wanna engage in the community, If something happens in class that doesn't feel right, but you don't exactly know how to approach it, we can talk, talk it through with you. And really anything, if something is bothering you, even if it seems small, come talk it out. Usually those small problems start turning into bigger problems. So just ignoring them and hoping they'll go away often isn't gonna be a great path to success. So. I'm opening up my doors. I'm happy to talk with you. Um, I will share with you my email address. You're always welcome to email me um, to set up a time to talk. Um, later in the semester, I may also um, do a scheduling calendar thing where you can just like pop yourself on my calendar, which makes it super extra easy. Um, I really want to talk to you. I would love to get to know all of you. Um, and particularly if things are bothering you and you need to talk them out because it's hard starting a new program. So I'm here for you. So I am going to stop the screen share and open it up for questions about anything I talked about or anything I didn't talk about that you wish I did. Mm, great question. Uh, any suggestions about holding remote TA sessions or office hours? So remote office hours, I find to be really nice by Zoom. Um, and I don't know how much training you all have received in Zoom. I'm hoping that you might be getting some next week. But there is a feature in Zoom uh, that allows for a waiting room. 
So you can either run your TA session, like just an open Zoom call. People can join as they want to. Um, just pop in and ask you questions. Um, you could also set up a waiting room so that you can only have one student at a time. Um, and as soon as that student's done, you can let the next one in and it'll show you who's waiting in your waiting room. Um, but I, I do think that Zoom is one of the best tools for those online office hours, um, unless, um, I think there are some other tools that you can do annotation in, but you can do annotation on Zoom uh, if you set it up properly. Uh, I do wanna caution you about um, using Google Meetup or Google Meet, whatever that thing is called. Uh, we do have some undergraduate students and some graduate students who are still living in China this semester and they are not legally allowed to use Google products. Um, so for accessibility, using Zoom is a, a better situation. What other questions do you have? Mm, what sort of a co course load? So uh, Sirius, you are a, um, you're a Bay State fellow, is that right? Because the answer is different for PhD students and Bay State fellows. So if you are a PhD student and you are also gonna be doing research in addition to your TA-ship, um, I recommend choosing one core course and your 890T and starting with that, maybe two core courses, but max two. Um, you wanna ease yourself in. There's a lot of moving pieces going on. You do not have to do your coursework quickly. That's my advice for incoming PhD students. For incoming Bay State fellows, um, if you are taking mostly 500 level courses, I think you can handle three likely uh, three courses, depending on what they are, depending on if they play to your strengths. Um, so think about it as like having a part-time job when you were an undergrad. Um, were you able to balance that? I think it's a very personal question. Correct. There's no nine credit requirement for PhD students to stay full-time. There is a nine credit requirement for master's students to stay full-time, but for PhD students, um, you do not need to have nine credits at a time. You just have to be enrolled in a class. Later on in your career, you'll get, um, you can enroll in this thing called continuous enrollment, which basically means you're not taking classes, but you're still a PhD student. Uh, great question about office hours. Is it appropriate to extend the TA session or office hours if there's still students waiting? It's totally up to you. I think it's definitely appropriate, but be careful about the boundaries on your time. If you have students who are very needy, who like really need a lot of your time, um, be careful about how much time you are allowing to them. If you feel like, you know what, this week, I don't have that much homework and I am happy to help. There's a ton of students waiting. So I'm gonna extend my one hour office hour to two hours. It's totally fine if you wanna do that. It's also totally fine to say, you know what, I have to go. Uh, this hour is all I can give you but I can be available by chat. I can be available on Piazza. You can offer different availabilities, but yes, it's totally appropriate. Um, good question. So for Bay State fellows who are MS students, um, the nine credit requirement does not count a TARA. You're getting paid as a TA. Um, you are getting paid $33.51 per hour. Um, and so that doesn't factor into your credits at all. And there is no way to do a TA for credits. So in terms of being in contact with the professor that you'll be working with, you can uh, be getting in contact with them now. Um, a lot of them have already reached out to their students, but it depends on um, the class and the professor and how they work, how soon that they're gonna get in contact with you. Um, so any 200 level course, I think probably they're already in contact with you. Um, 121 is a little bit odd because there are 10 instructors and each one has their own TA. Um, and so that one might not be totally communicative quite yet. Um, but it's totally appropriate for you to reach out now. 
But if you haven't heard from them, don't worry. If you don't hear from them next week, then you should worry. What else can I answer? Yes, there's no nine credit requirement for PhD students, as far as I know. Um, Eileen has like the best answer to that question. Eileen knows all of the answers about credits and um, IPO stuff. Uh, she's really good at dealing with IPO. I know they can be unhelpful sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive because I just, we, we try and encourage PhD students not to take more than six credits in a semester ever. Um, which I know if you are just coming out of undergrad sounds a little nutso, um, but really you have a lot of work you're going to be doing. So give yourself some grace with your course schedule, allow it to stretch out. Um, okay, so first, is there any requirement for graduation to be an RA? Um, no, there's not, though the expectation is that you will be. So the way that TAs and RAs work is that when you're a TA, you are doing teaching work for 20 hours a week for a professor on a course. Maybe you're working with your advisor, but usually not. Um, if you are an RA, then you're getting paid to do some of your own research. And some of that research might be not totally yours, but um, it's gonna be related to the research that's gonna bring you closer to your dissertation. So it takes a little bit of the burden off to be an RA, especially as you're later on in your career as a PhD student. Um, so we hope that everyone gets a chance to do an RA for at least a couple of semesters. Now, if you work in theory or algorithms, usually there's not a lot of grant money there. So it might be pretty rare that you get an RA ship uh, to do research. And um, some other uh, areas have a lot more grants and you might have more opportunities to be an RA. Um, Matt has a question about um, getting into 890T as a Bay State Fellow. As a Bay State Fellow, you're not actually required to take 890T. Um, you should ask Eileen if you're allowed to take it. I believe you're allowed to take it. It's a cool class. Um, but I don't think that you have to the same way. We sort of assume that you've, like, you've been around the block as a UMass student, so we don't require that you delve deeply into teaching. Um, and then yes, Nick's answer to Jack's question is correct. Um, you have to do 30 credits. So, you, so the nine credit thing is about being an international student, having full-time student status. Um, so if you take three semesters of nine credits, then you can take one more semester or a summer as a, um, a three credit part-time student uh, and then finish up in three semesters or like three plus semesters. Um, but no, it's not 36 total, it's 30 total. And as far as I know, there's no requirement that you continue to be a full-time student if you are um, a student from the US, it has to do with international stuff. Oh my gosh, Colin, I have no idea. Um, that's another Eileen question. Um, but I do know that you will have a tuition waiver um, for the uh, position that you hold as an assistant. So whether you're a TA or an RA or a TO, um, that is going to sort of like um, undo your tuition requirement, but it's not appearing in the bill yet. So it looks right now as though you have like this giant bill that you're supposed to pay. Um, but almost all of that is going to go away once all of the forms come out.
Yeah, cool. Nick and Nick both have good answers to that. What else can I answer? Okay, um, well, I'm waiting for any last minute questions. I will also tell you, um, this is for uh, PhD students only. Um, you should have received an email that you're gonna be enrolled in a mentorship program. We're gonna give you a mentor who is a little bit older. I am doing the matching right now. Um, so hopefully next, sometime next week, you'll be connected with your mentor. Um, and we'll have a little get together for mentors and mentees, which is, that'll always be fun. Um, sorry, Bay State Fellows, that we don't have a program for you in that way, um, but we encourage you to um, get together and, and talk with each other to find mentorship there. Um, Colin, it would be great if you took 890T, I think you in particular, because uh, you have a special situation as a TO. Um, we can talk about that more later if you want, but I would ask Eileen if you can enroll in it. I think it would be good. Um, do you need to submit work times every week? Um, no, you do not. We don't track your hours, actually. Um, the only time that I would encourage you to track your hours is if you are concerned that you're going to be consistently going over 20 hours. And that's, that's a good time to sort of check in with yourself about hours. Um, Prasanna, I'm actually not sure if RAs are required to take FERPA training. Um, it's a good idea because uh, I think it's just useful to know what FERPA is and you're going to be asked to re re-up it every semester to kind of review the rules and say, yes, I agree. Uh, okay, Gabriel, thank you for being here. Um, I am happy to wrap up. Um, I'm also happy to stay on if there are more questions. Thank you all. Um, I am putting my email address in the chat. Oops. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me for anything at all. Um, you are all very welcome. Have a wonderful weekend and I will hopefully see you online sometime soon.